self conscious. Is she? That's what she does. Uh, yeah, how come you're not eating? I want that line to go down so oh. I can eat all. We're on a diet. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, guys. Fly bar. This one is maybe that my second choice. Well, I can see why you like it. I can see why you like it. It's just that you guys. It would have already hit by now. You'll actually start playing while he's there. Start playing the banjo for a Record and then we'll come in. Okay. Come out.
Please be seated. The families of Amy Hawks and Brian Hefner, thank you for the gift of your presence today. This evening, you are witnesses and participants in one of the most important shared memories of their lives. It will be a memory of a miracle. Yes, a miracle. That's when God in his sovereignty allows two people, Brian and Amy, with different personalities and different gifts, their own likes and dislikes, and their own life histories to join together and to flourish. God is doing what he has been doing for eons, creating. And on this day, he's creating a new home. We gratefully testify to his creative genius. And we sanction and welcome God's participation in another wedding, like the one in which he performed his first miracle as God in the flesh. As it was spoken first in the garden regarding the first man and woman, and as it was when Jesus attended the marriage in Cana, so it is today. Brian is cleaving to and joining with Amy. Amy is cleaving to and joining with Brian. And they shall become one flesh according to the word of the Lord. And now, who is it who gives Amy in marriage to Brian? Her mother and I. Let's begin with prayer, please. Father, we come as family and as friends of this family to welcome you, the Father of us all. As you have been the source of manifold blessings on this family, we ask that you bless again. As you have provided your word to lead us in your righteousness, we ask that you guide by your counsel the home that is being formed here today. As you have modeled your will for Christ and his church through your institution of marriage, may you glorify yourself in this union of Brian and Amy and continue to reveal the wisdom of your plan through their home. As you have demonstrated your long-suffering and patience toward each person gathered here, may you and do your servants, Brian and Amy, through your spirit which you have given them, the grace to guard their love through perfect patience and selfless devotion. We welcome you as our Creator and Redeemer and Father. And by the matchless power of the name of Jesus, we ask your blessing. Amen. 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 Brian and Amy, you have providentially found each other in time. You are committing today to join together for a lifetime. The Bible has given us great encouragement to do just what you are coming together to do today. It says that marriage is good. It's set apart and special among all human relationships. 
And as we already noted, it states that in the real world, which we do not see, you are becoming one person. Without the eye of faith, that seems impossible. In fact, your challenge will be to manifest that reality as you live out in your shared life that which God speaks into existence. Amy, your new sister-in-law is here, Allison, with your new niece, Emery. And as truly as this newest arrival into the Hefner family was alive and was letting us on the outside know more about her, even before Allison gave birth, so your oneness, starting today, will be yours to bring to life throughout the years ahead. You will both do this through your actions, your words, your affections, and your commitment. You will be working with the Spirit of God, the ones to birth the miracle of your new identity. Amy and Brian. Brian and Amy. One. Let me encourage you with this Father's blessing that your success is certain. And let me instruct you with our Father's teaching of how it's going to happen. It will happen by your dependency on God. For God has never told us to do anything that he did not empower us already to do. Brian, I know you are a man of prayer. And I charge you to grow in speaking God's blessings on Amy and yourself. That he will birth in your shared life your oneness. It will happen by your undaunting practice of putting each other first. Not, if you do, then I will, or if you won't, then I won't. But, whether you will, I choose to. I chose the word undaunting because it is a daunting proposition to ask yourself, Amy, what will bless pride? And then to ask yourself, Am I willing to do it? It's a daunting thing for you to ask yourself, Brian. What does Amy need from me right now? And then to ask yourself, am I willing to give it? How will your oneness be manifest to the world? It will happen by your nurturing your souls in God's word. God gave Solomon the greatest wisdom the world has known. And... It was he, as an inspired writer of scripture, who penned the following. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their work. This means shared responsibilities in keeping home, in nurturing Caleb and, and, and Kylie, in paying the bills, in doing good for others. This will be the hallmark of your home, because you're a team. And a team wins only when it works together. Solomon continues, If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the person who falls and has no one to help him up. If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? This means that when either of you is discouraged or weary, the other has the privilege of being the first one to hold the other's hand. Amy, burdens must not be yours to hunker down and carry, to cover as your personal unwanted property. Brian, frustrated dreams must not become yours to berate yourself for and to tend as your personal wound. My children, you're standing next to your best Right. So Amy, accept Brian as the one who wants to be your shelter. Accept him for who he is. The one who wants to provide for you and make your life as sweet as you are to him. Brian, accept Amy as the one who believes in all that God is planning to make of you. Accept her for who she is, the one who wants to cheer your success and who would be the last one to ever give up on you. Solomon closed this passage. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A 
cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This means that as you devote yourselves to God, as you serve Him together, the result will be the defeat of Satan rather than Satan's defeat of your marriage. Making Christ the center of your marriage ensures His blessings on it and His preservation of it. But finally, how will you bring forth to others to see the reality of the oneness that God speaks into existence today? You will do it by your unconditional love. As you love unconditionally, you will provide the warmth that each of you needs. Something that Paul wrote to Christians regarding their relationship to other Christians must surely be key for two Christians who marry. Accept each other as Christ has accepted you. Christ did not put conditions on his love for us, or we would have no hope for eternity. I charge you, do not put conditions on your love, or you will remove hope from your marriage. I repeat my blessing on you, that you will surely succeed in birthing God's miracle in your home, and as head of the Hefner family, I commit the entire family to that end. And now because you desire to commit your lives to each other and to form a new home where Christ is honored, I ask that you turn to face each other, join right hands as you share these vows. Brian, repeat after me. I, Brian, take you in. I, Brian, take you in. To be my beloved wife and friend. <laughs> I will strive to lead our family in God's way. I will strive to lead our family in God's way. To sacrifice my wants for your joy. To sacrifice my wants for your joy. To cherish you. To cherish you. To nurture you. To nurture you. To nurture you. And to hold steadfastly <coughs> to you. And to hold steadfastly. As long as I shall live. As long as I shall live. Amy, repeat after me. I, Amy, take you bride. <coughs> To be my beloved husband and friend. To be my beloved husband and friend. I will strive to help you bear your burdens. I will strive to help you bear your burdens. To sacrifice my wants for your joys. To sacrifice my wants for your joys. To cherish you. To cherish you. To nurture you. To nurture you. And to hold steadfastly to you. And to hold steadfastly to you. As long